Okay, I'm just um, finishing this face. I'm just putting decorations on top. So it's going to look like that. Cute. Let's look at his work. Okay, I'm going to My name is Elena Schwab. I'm a head designer based in London. I make bespoke hats. And nowadays, fast fashion is so popular. So why do you choose your brand as a slow fashion with sustainable mobility? I also believe in individuality. Fashion changes all the time. It's so fast nowadays. Style is something that is yours. So I believe um, handmade products yeah. that with the hand and made with your imagination and materials that you choose. Uh, so it's easier for a person to choose the correct item to represent the personality. Those hats are designed for beautiful to make the day special. Yeah. So some of the hats are quite big to make a statement. Some want to but my way is so big, but it's still really stable. I can do it. One of the most important things is no matter how big the hat is, yeah. my job is to keep it light, yeah. wearable. Yeah. Uh, the biggest advice is yeah. when you go to a designer or even if you go to a tourist store, yeah. to wear the hat. Always try as many hats as possible in front of the mirror. Always try hats, the more the better. Yeah. Try different um, uh, position on the right, on the left, slightly forward or backwards because yeah. it, it very much depends how you position the hat or the hat. Event yeah. that's called Royal Ascot Horse Race. They are designed to catch an eye. They are designed to feel yourself glamorous and beautiful, feeling yourself lady. So, do you have like any recommend that what kind of face shape to choose? What kind of dress? People who have an oval shape, yeah, I would say the luckiest one because most of the shapes suit them. Square shapes, for example, like mine, yeah, means that the crown is slightly bigger than the, the round shapes. Round shape, yeah, it's advisable for them to wear hats on the side. This hat is designed both for special occasion yeah. and for casual wear. If you have veil, yes. veiling is, is usually to, uh, to make a statement, to create uh, some kind of a drama. Yeah, on a special occasion you can wear a veil, so basically it's like you're creating distance between yes. you and a person who you're communicating with, but in a very charming way. But um, maybe I should uh, say through plastic for the corona. <laughs> <laughs> so for casual wear, you can yeah. always lift the veil up. Yeah. 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 Oh, so you can like wear plastic. So you, you can change. like, uh, you open to the world, you're oh. afraid to communicate, yeah. you, you are inviting a person to come close. Yeah. Uh, like a game. Uh, yeah, with the, with the music accessory. Wearing hats is a particular uh, sign language yeah. that you communicate. You, you don't have to say particular words. Yeah. For example, wearing this hat, yeah. and if I want to some distance, I'm just going to put it slightly exactly. forward. So you see, my, my dress is kind of that. So, so I'm sorry if I communicate. Mm -hmm. If I'm wearing a hat backwards, yeah. you see my face is open. Oh, oh. Yes, I'm yeah. open to the world, I'm open to everyone, I'm, I'm happy, I'm cheerful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see, just depending on how you position the hat, mm -hmm. it's, it's just great, already mm -hmm. um, particular communication language. Yeah. Okay, so you have like a teaching class on that as well. I do. At least one hat by yourself, mm -hmm. you suddenly get the understanding how it's done. Yeah. You appreciate the hard work. Yeah. Because making a hat is not easy. 
<laughs> it's a very long process. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> that involves a lot of steps. Mm -hmm. And then they start appreciating handcraft. Yeah. And not just hats, but they start appreciating everything that is made by hat because yeah. they understand how much labor and how much time. Yeah. In terms of sustainability, I also think designer has responsibility to produce something like a sustainable products. Mm -hmm. They also have responsibility to teach, uh, to educate them <laughs> how to appreciate slow fashion. Now, after you make a hat, you, at the next time you go shopping, you would think twice if you would like to make it by your head or buy something handmade. Yeah. Or you're going to go buy something uh, fast fashion. This is it. As I know, fashion industry is the second dirtiest uh, industry, industry, industry of, of the world yeah. after the big oil. Mm -hmm. Can you believe? All the items that are in the uh, landfill. This is where clothes we throw away end up. Thousands of tons of rubbish polluting someone else's country. Each one of these rotting garments was once purchased by a shopper on the other side of the world. They're sent here for the second-hand clothes market. But there's now so much clothing waste here. Ghana's systems at breaking point. It's absolutely sad and devastating. That's that's actually one of the reasons I'm in the handcraft business. Mm -hmm. Because I want to, people to understand, start valuing products yeah. again. So it's about value rather than about possession. When you value what you have, you don't need to go and buy another and another and another piece. 看过废弃衣物的垃圾场快时尚也不耻地去抄袭其他设计师今天的分享呢就到这里了